Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Dorica Faulkner. I am the founder of Girls Unlimited LLC. And if you're new here, welcome to our Ladypreneur series, episode three. Um, today, I have with me Alicia Rucker. She is a junior at Gainesville High School. And today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Talia Lopez from Always Advocating. Uh, we're very happy to have her on today. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to get into all your business. Yes, awesome. So, you know, I met you in college. So, yes, yeah, so I graduated college last year. Um, and I guess to say I've always been a really driven kind of person. Like I always knew what I wanted to do from like middle school. Like I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew my path. Um, but in high school, um, I had I started to get health issues, so I couldn't join the military. So that was my first pivot. And so I decided to go to UNG and study social work and also do a separate program and become a dementia specialist. Um, so in two years, I was able to do both. And so I graduated with, I guess, this under or this belief that, oh my God, I want to be like the CEO of some dementia company. Like I was, you know, like on a high, I was super excited and I had a really good resume. I did all the things right. I had the double major, I had this, I had that, all the certificates. And anyway, so I was, I went into the work field. I was looking for a job. I'm not even kidding. I applied to over 74 jobs and then I stopped counting. Um, and I could, nobody would hire me. So if you don't know, I'm 21 years old. Um, I graduated, I think I was 20. Yeah, I graduated at 20. So, um, or maybe 19, I don't even know. 20 or 19 and no, I guess it was 20 because I'm 21, yeah. Um, and I was fair, you know, I'm fairly young for someone that works with those with dementia. Um, most caregivers and people in that field are obviously like 50s, 40s. So it was really, really hard to get my foot in the door even though I had like six years of experience doing what I did and all my education. Um, and I, you know, kept getting closed doors in my face and people kept telling me like, why don't you just start all the way at the bottom? And I'm like, start at the bottom, like where people start, where they don't have a college degree. Like, no, I know I'm meant for more. And that's not something that I will accept. Um, so months, you know, a couple months went by again and I'm like, I'm broke. I have no money. So I absolutely had to take one of those, you know, entry level positions. So I worked my butt off and I was so sad that I had to accept a position that was like $12 an hour. My whole world was like just crushed. Um, and I mean, I guess a good thing happened. My health declined really, really bad that same month that I um, got that job. So I added, had to quit and I'm sitting here like, what am I going to do now? Another pivot. And so long story short, I was sitting there like, okay, what can I do? The only thing I know is how to care for someone with dementia. And, you know, my whole goal was to get a really good job so that I can start a foundation to help caregivers understand dementia. Like that was my whole goal, but I was going to get a job to try to fund that. Right. Um, but I was like, you know what, I have to start that now. So I decided to start my foundation and basically I created online courses to help caregivers understand their loved one, understand caregiving, um, understand dementia, that whole thing. And, um, after like four months of doing that business, I was able to help thousands of caregivers worldwide. And it was such a hit and it was so, so beautiful. Like I fell in love with the dream that I can make money doing something that I love. And so um, I had a lot of women entrepreneurs come to me and say, how did you do this? How did you do this so young? How are you 20 years old? And you're helping literal like elderly people care for their, like, how are you doing this? Um, so then I started doing um, coaching on the side. Um, I didn't really know what coaching was. I was just like, charge for like an hour session, kind of, you know, dipping my toes. And I fell in love with that. I fell in love with being able to help women, you know, create their dream business and, you know, like just literally create their dream life. So now I'm an online business coach and that's what I do full time. Awesome. Okay. So like she said, we did meet back at UNG. Uh, we actually did a leadership program together. And I remember being in the leadership program. I was like, who is this girl? I was like, she's pretty young. She's very stylish. She sounds like she knows what she's talking about. So I think I kind of maybe took it upon myself to like find you on social media and follow you. And ever since then, like, I can tell you, like, you know your stuff and <laughs> I think you're doing a great job just from looking at like the client reviews and stuff that you work with. Um, so Alicia, you got something? When did you start your business? 
Um, so, okay, so dates to the story. So I graduated in May. And like she said, in the leadership program, one of our like, I guess one of our like graduating tasks was to create a presentation of what we're going to do, like what our like life goal was. And like I said, I wanted to create a foundation to, I wanted to do that. Like that was in my head, but I knew I needed the funds. So I needed to get a job. So I graduated in May, um, June, I sh like really tried to look for a job and I could not find one in July. I kept looking and I finally just, I literally needed something. So I just like, you know, got that job. Um, and then my health was really bad, July, August, September. And um, I want to say July, August, September is when I um, started my dementia business. And it only took, yeah, like I said, a couple months in order for that to really um, skyrocket. Obviously, I wasn't getting rich off of that. That was, I was selling courses for like $25, but I was able to, you know, sustain my life. So um, and then I want to say November. So this month is my business anniversary, like my business coaching anniversary. Um, so last November, um, I started my business coaching business and it's officially been a year. Cool. So, um, I'm going to, I don't know if you said this out your mouth, but, um, just by watching on social media, it seems like you're pretty successful, right? So what kind of helped you or what are your keys to success or what do you think that is? So I think just like a motto I live by is like, I embrace my plan B and then like C, D, E, F, like all the way down to the alphabet. Because like I said, like, I mean, I know a lot of women actually come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe you're 21 years old. I was doing some craziness when I was 21 years old. Like, I can't believe you're doing that. And like I said, like the theme of my life is I did everything right. I always had, like, I, I'm not a partier and you like a very stereotypical 21 year old, right? Um, but I live my life. Like I, I, what I think is like, what can I do today in order for this moment to benefit my future? And I think you have to live by that. If you're living in the moment, you're going to stay exactly where you always are. Um, I have this saying that I even teach my clients is, um, you have to really embody the version that you want to become or, or the version of the person you want to become, or you're never going to become that person. So I always um, call my higher self, my six figure me. Um, and you can call it your, you know, CEO or whatever your goals are, but it's really like you wake up and you're like, are you doing the things that that girl does? Or are you procrastinating? Or are you, you know, just living your life on how can I have fun or whatever. Right. So just really, truly, I think that has contributed to my success. I've always been really driven because there's goals that I want and there's things that I never want to happen to me ever again from mm -hmm. like the past. So um, I just really think you have to work hard until you don't ever have to work hard anymore. And that's where I am. So you mentioned uh, some health issues. So mm -hmm. you kind of tell us, cause I know like mm -hmm. mental wellness, self-care is like a big thing, right? So with your health problems, how do you balance, okay, my health, and my work life, my personal life. So how do you balance it all? Yeah. So just so you guys know, like what I have, I have, um, I have, everything's autoimmune. Um, I don't, they don't know what I have, but basically my symptoms are, I can't go outside without completely getting hives and going into almost anaphylactic shock. Like I can't be in direct sunlight. Like I can't get, I can't be hot. I can't work out. I can't dance anymore. And my life has completely changed because of it. So anyways, but so that's kind of what I have. I also have a lot of stomach problems. Um, I don't anymore because I've been able to kind of watch what I'm eating and kind of heal myself a little bit. But last year, I remember even being in college and my stomach, like I would have these flare ups where I'm like screaming and crying in the college bathroom. But like sitting there, I could just drop out of college. I'm sick. I'm going to go live with whoever would take me back then. <laughs> like, no, like I had a goal. Like I know, I knew that I was the only one truly that was going to like I was the only one that was going to get me to where I wanted to be. So unfortunately, like I had to sit there and think this is not going to be my life. And it drove me to work even harder. And, you know, obviously it can hurt. And I'm not saying like, I don't, I didn't cry. I cried a lot, but I think it's the belief that I'm religious. So I always say like, it's the belief that like God has a better plan and this is serving me in some way. And so like my, like my stomach problems, even with the story, if I didn't have a stomach problems, I would still be working in that dead end job. If I didn't have stomach problems, I would have never created an online caregiving school. 
if I had stomach pro- or if I didn't have stomach problems, I would never be able to help women accomplish beautiful things. So like everything has some sort of meaning. So I think if you're in a current situation, mental health, absolutely anything you're going through, think how can this maybe be serving me? Um, and I think even for relationships, you know, like you have a bad breakup, your boyfriend, you know, whatever. I think like, did you even want to marry the guy? No. So y'all broke up. So I think it's easier, obviously, to like look back in your life and see how that wasn't serving you. And it's way harder to do it in the moment, but just always realize that what's meant to be will always be and everything is serving you. So I think that's kind of what I lived by um, for the longest. I kept thinking like, this isn't going to be my life forever. Things are going to get better. And they truly did. Any other questions? Okay. Um, So you're fairly young. You said you're 21. So what is it like coaching older women, right? So you're young, they're older. Is that like weird to you? Kind of like basically telling an older woman what to do or kind of coaching them through their business? Um, I think for my dementia business, it was a lot of backlash when they found out my age, they thought, oh, like, what do you, what do you mean? What did you start when you were two years old? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like real disrespectful and real quick, especially being on social media, everybody thinks they can talk to you sideways. So it was really hard and it was very, you know, like, it's kind of like getting bullied in high school is what I would think about it. Like you're going to even have bullies when you're older, trying to like live your dream life. Like there's always going to be somebody hating. So Um, it was very kind of, it was hard and it was, it could have been easy for me to be like, oh my God, you're right. I'm I'm 20 or I guess, yeah, I was 20 years old. I'm 20 years old. Like I'm gonna give up. But it was the one person that saw my age and was like, wow, like, I absolutely love that. This is the lifestyle that you created for yourself. I absolutely love that. This is what you're choosing to do with your life. And I'm going to buy from you because you're so knowledgeable. You're so easy to understand and you break down things so amazing And you're not just like this complicated doctor that's just throwing me like terms that don't even make any sense. So I think it was weird at first, but then I just really took the good in it and saw, you know, like how what I'm doing is impacting people, but it was an everyday battle. Um, So that's why I actually, honest to God, chose to do this um, online business, um, the business coaching business, because um, I step into this field and no matter what age, color, no matter what I look like, no matter what I talked, where um, my hair is not done, no makeup, like people still will love you. Like I think in this online space, online, anything, like um, there's so many different businesses online, but just having an online business, I always tell my clients, like you can attract exactly who you are. So I have this one client that she's really into like witchy things, (laughs) like the moon and the, I don't really know what that's called, but she attracts, she's so herself that she attracts exactly who she wants to attract. So right now I actually don't attract like real older people. Um, if they are older, then they have a very young personality and they love me. So I don't actually get as much like backlash that I used to, but in, I guess if I ever did, I would just remember why I'm doing this, why I'm here. And that like, that's just one person's opinion of you. And that is not actually who you are. Right. Okay, so if you could give any girl, any woman who was thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or starting a business if they always wanted to start it, what advice would you give them? I'll be honest, like it's hard in the beginning. It's hard if you don't have um, income to invest. And I think, so there's a lot of different things I would say. Obviously, I would invest in whatever knowledge you need but in order to invest you need some startup money so um i was the type of person that i i couldn't work so all i had was to just give everything i had and run with it but if you're not that kind of person and you just really really like need money then i would recommend like maybe saving up to really start your business because like i don't think entrepreneurship is for everybody but it's definitely for the women that want freedom and don't want to like answer to their not answer to the boss because I answer to my clients, if that makes sense, kind of in a sense, 
like, I don't want you guys to think that entrepreneurship is this like free, amazing thing. It is absolutely amazing and it's free, but you still need structure, right? So if you're the type, if you're a procrastinator really, really easily, if you are just um, someone that gives up super easy, I just want to tell you, if you want to join entrepreneurship, just keep that, be very conscious of that and do not like let that get you down. But if you're not like that, you're going to absolutely thrive so, so quickly because that's the kind of person I am. And I think that's why I've been able to be where I am so quickly is because like of my personality. So I would just be really um, conscious of like maybe some um, things, some self-sabotage habits that you might have and make sure that you're working through that as you're also trying to start your business and make it successful. Because I think mindset is a really, really big part of entrepreneurship. Okay, good. Um, so let the people know where they can find you online. I will tag you um, in our bio, um, the link for the video, but let the people know where they can find you online um, and anything that you might have coming up. Awesome. So um, my Instagram handle is always dot advocating. And then my website is always advocating.com. Um, yeah, I don't. So right now my wedding is next week, so I don't have much going on right now, but please feel free to stock my content or just send me a DM. Like if you are seriously starting or thinking of starting an online business, I'm sure you have so many questions. So please like feel free to slide in my DMs and um, ask me absolutely any questions. Um, and then feel free to just stalk my Instagram because there's a lot of videos and stuff. <laughs> Your content is really good. Okay, I just want to say thank you again for joining us today and giving us some insight and sharing your entrepreneurship journey. Um, and congratulations on your wedding. I will be on social media for all the pictures and everything. <laughs> um, so congratulations and thank, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. Bye.